Yep, I'm, I just said, I said, I'm hearing some extra shit in the background. I don't know what's going on. Huge. Come on, man. We got to get that off for us. We're hearing Mike and Golik. There it goes. There it goes. Hold on, Joe. We got to start right because it, that kind of messed me up. Let's do it again one more time. Hold on. Ready? Yeah. True Ninja, I'll chop a motherfucker up right now. The, because I tell you what, I'm, that's what I'm doing all the negative shit in 2004. I'm yep, fucking chopping yep, all that shit up, man. I'm chopping all that shit up. Hey, man, Wednesday, 10 o'clock. You know what time it is. It's, it's, it's the Devo and Chris Joe show. Before we get started, I want to shout out our, our sponsor, our loyal sponsor. Shout out to Flintstone. Shout out to my guy, Mike Flynn. Again, if you indulge, you indulge. If you don't, you don't. But... I suggest you take a walk down the block on Walton Street and check out Flintstone. Go in there, get you some goodies, get you some whatever you need, relax, sit back. And, and I'll tell you what, Joe, we're going to have a great show today, man. We got the legendary Hall of Famer, Naismith Hall of Famer, Coach Jim Beheim. And, and after the show, I'm going to feel so good, I'm going to the sauna. Turn, turn, turn your, turn your, your volume up, man. We got to fix it. We got to fix Joe's volume. Log it. Hey, well, look, Joe's going to be right back on, man, but it's, it's me right now. We, we all good because even though I don't got a haircut, I, I am handsome, man. I am handsome in, in these grades right here. That's showing, uh, that's showing wisdom. Are you check, back, check, Joe? Check, check. Ah, he's back. Joe, I was going on. I was just telling him real quick. I thought you, you, were on, you were on ISO for a minute. You were taking an ISO, ISO mode. But it's all good. I'm back, baby. Two-man game. You bet. Back. You bet. Two-man game. I, I, but it was okay because I was about to go into my rant about I don't got a haircut, but I'm still looking handsome. I got the wisdom with the gray. You know what I'm saying? It, <laughs> it just came, it just yeah, came a little bit early, wise. man. But, uh, but look, I hope you all tuning in. We got the legendary coach, Jim Beheim coming on. I know yesterday – um, we had a tough one against Duke, so we're going to recap that. We'll talk about that with Coach. Uh, we'll get into what he's been up to. We've we seen him broadcasting for ESPN and ACC Network, uh, so we'll talk to him about that and everything else that um, he's been having going on outside of uh, uh, the broadcasting. So he should be on in, in a couple minutes. Hey, Diva, my guy Jordan. I don't know if you realize I'm, I'm standing today. It's a standing episode for your boy Joe. I'm counting my steps and counting my calories. But you know what it really comes down to is baby girl is up and I don't want to cramp her space. So, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to disrupt it. So I have to go in the room and I have to do my thing. So you might see me. You might see me uh, do a couple of ear dribbles, a couple of ear shots. But it's all good. I'm here. I'm locked in. Man, we locked in. What, if you got to pick up baby girl, you got to do it. Man, come on. She a part of the show, too. That's family <laughs> right there. But look, Joe, let's, let's uh, welcome on the legendary Coach Jim Beheim. Coach, what's going on, man? Coach, how are you guys doing? Huh? This is trouble. The two of you, well, I don't coach, know. You got to get your volume. It's okay. We got to have – I see Julie. She, she going to help you. <laughs> She's trying to fix it. <laughs> there, there you go. go. There you go. You good. You, you all good. Did you hear it? Can you hear him? Hear him loud and clear. Are, you, are you sure you want to hear him? Yeah, we <laughs> well, I, I don't know if we do, but the but the listeners do. <laughs> Happy New Year, Julie. Happy, Happy New Year, Julie. Coach. Happy, Happy New Year. New Year so guys. Happy. I look Happy. scary, so I'm sneaking out. <laughs> all good, all good. So, uh, Coach, first of all, thank you for coming on. And, and I guess we will start off with, uh, I mean, what's been going on since retirement? Yeah, I know you got. Well, I guess you don't have a lot of free time. You've been you've been doing the broadcasting with ACC and, and ESPN, but you know, let us know what's been going on outside of that. Well, mostly, you know, still working for the university, doing some stuff uh, with the, you know, with coaches, with recruiting a little bit. With, um, you know, I, I stop by the office every day, talk to the coaches, um, okay, and, and do some fundraising, but. Uh, the foundation, we still work on our foundation a lot. And then the other thing is ESPN. I've been in the studio a few times. I've got about probably eight, 10 more studio appearances, and I've got some games with them. 
Uh, next week, I'm Duke at Pittsburgh. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then I've got a radio game, Illinois, Michigan State. So I'll get to see Quincy uh, play. Uh, he's playing much okay, better. Right. It's took it's kind of taken him four or five years, but he's I think he's found a, a little <laughs> bit what he needs to do. Uh, he tried to go to Oregon and just shoot threes, and you know that's not he's so physical and strong. He, yeah, you know, yeah. Last year I saw one game, I think it only had 14 or 15 rebounds. And that's really what I always thought he could do for us. Uh, if you remember his second year here, he was averaging a double-double for the first yeah, double, half. Double-double, yeah. And, uh, you know, he got to Oregon just shooting jump shots. And, you know, he can do that, but he can do other things. So it looks like Illinois has got a good team, and uh, that should be a good game to, to do. So – I do a few more games after that and studio stuff, so it's kind of kind of fun to do. Um, you know, keep keep busy. You know, when you work uh, forty seven years every day, it's tough to uh, yeah. do stuff. So I'm fortunate yeah. that uh, I've got a lot of that stuff to do. Get to go. I, I watch practice most just for a little while. Most days. I think the coaching side. I think Adrian's doing an unbelievably good job switching over. It's tough to switch over to man-to-man -man from all zone. And I think they're doing a really good job. I think in some situations, like at Duke uh, last night, they they really lost the game because of some of the turnovers on offense that led yeah. to shots. Uh, they were even. Points off of turnovers. Kills. And then just live ball turnovers that go for buckets. And, uh, you know, Duke's good. They're really good. I mean, they made eight straight threes. Come on. That's yeah, standard for anybody. Well, way higher. Uh, I think that's a high standard for anybody but Caitlin Clark, I think. Kind of basketball. <laughs> she's <laughs> unbelievable. She's the best player. You know, if you had to pick up to watch one player in college basketball, who would you pick to watch? I'd pick her. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, great. did you see the game winner last night, Joe? A game oh, yeah. State? Oh yeah, for sure. From the logo, step back. Unbelievable. <laughs> and she got she just how she she got Off the charisma. She got the swag. Yeah, she do. She's unbelievable, she man. It was She's a step unbelievable back. player. It was somebody right there? It wasn't like yeah, nobody was there. No, very very tough shot. Very tough shot. Right and, there. It was like holy cow. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I want to ask you, just on the, the speaking about you doing the games, you know, how much fun is it for you to break down the game and now that you're not doing it in the sense of, you know, you're trying to break it down to, to win, but you're breaking it down to mere so be educational for the people who are listening. I like to do that. And the other thing is, at the end of the day, I can't, I'm not losing any games. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, know, you don't go home. That bad feeling, you know, as you guys know, you're at the top of the world when you win and you're at the very yeah. bottom when you lose. There's no in between. It's not like, exactly. well, we played, a, we played a good game. You know, it just doesn't work that way. And so, yeah, I mean, I like talking about basketball. I, I watch all the games. You know, I love watching, you know, John Morant's back, just watching some of the things he can do. The NBA, really, just for a minute to talk about it, is crazy how many great players there are. I mean, oh, there's yeah. a couple. I mean, it used to be, you know, Magic and Bird and that era, you know, Jordan mm -hmm. and his era. Today, Giannis, uh, Jokic, you know, Doncic, uh, uh, John Moran, Steph Curry. I mean, you can't stop. Booker, yeah, every every team has one. Damn near. Orlando you know how it works. Two young players in Orlando, Ben Carroll, who I thought would be the best of the group when he came out, uh, what mm -hmm. he did against us. And then, you know, the the, the German brothers, uh, you know, the... the uh, yeah, the, Ragnar's, yep. Really good. And uh, it was funny, Jimmy and I and Buddy were in Vegas, and we were having breakfast, and they sat right down next to us, the two Franz and uh, I can't think of Maurice. Uh, yeah. Mo. Maurice, yeah. Mo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, two really nice guys, really, you know, uh, talked to them basketball stuff and 
Jimmy, we knew Jimmy was going to Germany and play, and he they were talking about that. Yes, 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 that's great. Really, really good guys and really good players. I mean, Orlando's pretty, really pretty good. So you look around the NBA, to me it's uh, amazing how many really good players there are, and it's 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 pretty fun to watch those guys play. Uh, yeah. the, the ability, and be you know, I mean, just go down the list there, and I think I think the Knicks made a great trade getting the kid from Toronto. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, on he, he does, Obi, yeah, he does a lot of things that that win games. I watched them play the other day, and he does a lot of stuff out there that's really, I think, helps the Knicks and. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they how they play the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, just speaking I, I one of my favorite was, guys. Oh, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Yeah, no, just saying he was a – I think he was a second team all defense, but he is a person who just plays his role. You know what I mean? And just yeah. how important that is to – you know, it's, and I guess when you're making – a lot of money it's hard like your ego is really in play there when you're, you're you, you know if you're told you can't you know we don't want you to do this when you feel you can but when you're doing it you're being the best that you can at your role and accepting it Devo and I speak about accepting roles right and you could be as a coach you could tell a player this is what I want you to do but if you don't accept it well it's not going to work out so accepting a role is huge. <laughs> right. it's, it's nice with him he makes a great play he just puts his head down runs back on defense he yeah. makes a great block, a great shot, a great anything. He, he just puts his head down, runs back. He, he doesn't, yeah. like, you know, make a gesture, or, you know, nothing. I mean, he just plays basketball. <laughs> and he, he guards little guys and big guys. He, he yeah. guards guards. Strong as ever. Yeah, he guards are strong. Big guys. I mean, he's, he's a really, really good player. I hadn't seen that much of him. And – he brings a lot to the table. I mean, the Knicks gave up two really good plays. It's probably one of those trades that's good for both teams. Barrett's good. Quickly's really – I really like Quickly. I think he's really good. They, yeah, he's solid. Toronto got two really good players out of this deal, but I think the Knicks got a guy that makes a difference in it. The, and they've got the kid from Villanova to two who, who I think is a little underrated. And – uh and they got oh, Grimes coming. Uh, yeah. yeah. I remember him. He visited us out of high school with his mom and dad. We played a good game. He was a junior. And we had a good game. It was exciting. But I knew talking to him with his mom and dad, like, he's from Philadelphia. He's going to Villanova. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty yeah, simple. Yeah, so. Yeah. And he became even better, I think, than – Projection, you know, he's he's a pretty good player right now. Yeah, he had a good tournament. Man. Yeah, I tell you what, though, a guy who I've been, who, he's slowly becoming one of my favorite players to watch, Anthony Edwards. I mean, and just Ooh. Minnesota, they're fir they're first in the West right now. Anthony Edwards, mm -hmm. I mean, think his last five games, 30, 30 plus in each of his last five games, he had forty four the other night. Yeah, yeah I mean, this yeah. dude right here, unbelievable. Well, against the Knicks, no, I watched the whole game. I just had—I don't know—I just doing nothing. And he was—he had thirty-three, and he didn't. And he was mad because he missed four or five shots that he knows he should make. I mean, he easily could have had forty. And uh, I remember seeing him in high school. He was going into his junior year, and he made a play. He stole the ball and went down and dunked over two people. And I looked. I. <laughs> First time I'd seen him, I'd never heard of him. And I said, oh, that's like the closest guy I've seen to Michael Jordan. And uh, he is. I mean, he's, he's, I mean, nobody's Michael Jordan, but he's, he's, close. he's pretty he's gifted. Close. He's gifted. Real gifted. They said that. It, it's funny that they, they said that, that he, I mean, his comparison was Michael Jordan. It's kind of like, crazy to compare somebody to Michael Jordan, but I guess it's his movements and how he plays. I mean, his frame, he's 6'6". Six, six, he's, he's more athletic than Mike. Yeah, he's he's really good. Well, I don't know about that, but he's he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to be Michael. I, but he's, he really is good. I mean, he's going to be, what is he, 23, 24 years old or something? I mean, he's probably yeah, he's, he's, he's going to be good for a long time. He's going to carry the torch for the league for real soon. 
And that's a that's like about the seventh or eighth guy we mentioned that's a superstar. We haven't talked about right. Anthony Davis or LeBron, and who LeBron's still playing at superstar level. I don't know how. I don't know how. They've got to check, test his genetics or something. Yeah. He's not normal, Coach. Play. He's not normal. He's a different human being. He's, he's, he's no, not did, did, did we get a crack? Did we have a crack at uh, LeBron coming to the Qs? Although everyone know, knew he was going. He was, he, 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 to the going he was going straight to the league. There was never any, yeah. any thought about that. And yeah, that was, that was not even. And I think <laughs> Different world. He, he liked Ohio State. He, he he's from yeah. there. He, he could have easily gone to Ohio State. I think. Right. Switching gears, coach. I want to talk about uh, this year's team and a couple of the players, right? And I want to yeah. get, get your take on you know the maturation. I guess you know from game to game of Malik Brown, how, what you've seen in his game that has changed, or how he's gotten better in, in the position that he's in today, especially after last night's game. Well, he's. I talked to him about, I think about, I go by and I talk to all the players a little bit, say hello. I talked to him about, I think about 10 days ago. Since you're playing good, you can even do more. You know, he's an unassuming guy. He doesn't try to, you know, do as much. But Duke is a really good game for him because of pick and roller. He, yep. he, he's really good at catching the ball in those situations. And if you don't help on our guards, you're going to have problems. So teams are going to have to help Malik. And that's going to create openings. And Malik gets in there. He's strong. He finishes with both hands. And uh, he's an efficient player. He's strong. I, I mean, Filipowski's a tremendous player. He's going to score points. But I think Malik did a, a very good job playing him and guarding him in there and making it hard for him. Uh, I, he's a heck of a player. He's a great kid. He, he says nothing. He just goes about his business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's hard. Uh, never hear him. Really, I don't even say a word. He's just as quiet as can be. <laughs> the are really good players that don't say, I mean, we've had Brandon Trish. I don't know if he said hello to me in four years. You know, he, <laughs> he still works out at our house. He comes, he comes in here because he still plays and he works out all the time, all summer. He'll call it, you know, t eight o'clock Saturday morning to come and use the gym. Uh, he's, he's unbelievable, but uh, some guys are quiet, you know, and that's that's not a bad thing, you know. It's good to have quiet guys uh, that just do the job. So, very impressed with him, and I still think he's got a big upside. Yeah, I think he's even going to get better. In high school, he he they they didn't get him the ball much. He just rebound, play defense, and now he's starting to do some other things and. Uh, he had a three. Really, surprising. Really, hey, coach. I, I kind of I want to. We'll stay on the team. Talk about the team a little bit um, because you know I do all the post games, so I watch all the games. And I mean the depth and the versatility. We have a lot of it this year, but I mean one position that I think that we really need to step up. You know, for this team to to reach its full potential, it, is that three position, like that wing position, and, and and also I think JJ he has to be more aggressive. But if we could have either, you know, Chris Bell or, or or Justin Taylor really step up in that wing position and just add a little bit more perimeter shooting or just add a little bit more scoring, I, I think that would really help us, you know, get to the next level. Just what do you think about that three position? Because a lot of times I see Justin Taylor at the four, and even last night he's guarding, you know, Piakowski or whatever, which is, you know, obviously a mismatch. But if, if we could have, a, a, you know, Malik at the five, Benny at the four, and then, you know, either Bell or, or Taylor at that three spot with, with Judah and J.J., I just think it just this team will be at a whole nother level if we can get consistency from that spot. I just kind of want to get your take on that. Well, you know, it's obvious that Malik has given us stuff. It's a huge play at center. And I think the other thing is I, I still would like to see Naheem McLeod 
you know, I think he has some potential to do more. Um, uh, you know, he's, he has trouble in the man-to-man switching, things like that. But I think he has – he's so big. You know, you, you're always hoping for a guy like that to kind of get a spark. Then you could play Malik at the four. You could even play Benny at the three in that situation if that happened. Um, but if that didn't happen, I mean, Quadir is playing good at the th- – he can play the three now. So he's physical. Um, I, I don't think that, I don't see a problem with him at the three. Uh, I think you're right, JJ and and Judah have to play good. You know, they're really a big key to this team. Um, they both have to contribute. You know, you think back to the George game was really close. Could have gone Georgetown's way very easily, and JJ hit what two or three threes and a pull up jumper. And all of a sudden, we win the game. And if he doesn't hit those two threes in the pull-up, we're probably behind and going to maybe lose. So he's a big key. Quadir's played really well. You know, I think Benny, you know, still got to do more. I mean, he's getting there. He's getting back. He missed a lot of time. I think Coach has done an unbelievable job being patient, trying to get him going because he's a difference maker. He's 6'9". I mean, he yeah. and he can. Um, he's 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 not there yet because he's missed so much time. But I think to get there, I think Malik's obviously there. Justin and Chris Bell just they haven't shot it well or played as well as we need them to play. It's that's pretty simple. I mean, yeah, your, your bench is really good, but part of the reason so good is. Starters haven't played, so you know you you know you're right about that. There's a, a couple different ways that can work with the first way with Naheem playing better, Benny at the four, Guadir, Chris Bell at the three, and the guards. Um, Guadir could play some two if he had. To. I mean that's yeah. not a, very easily would be done. The team has a lot of flexibility. But on the other hand, you know, you have to you have to try to get something out of those two guys. But this is a very young basketball team. I mean, Denny might be a junior, but he hasn't played that much. And Naheem might be a junior, but he hasn't played at all. So you've really got a six or seven sophomores out there, eight, whatever the number is. And... I think they're getting better. Their defense has gotten a lot better. You know, in the four tough games they've had, I think they've been tied or one or two points down after, what, 25 minutes, 30 minutes in the game? Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah. Gonzaga? Um, And, you know, I mean, I think they've been right there against the good teams. And Virginia's they had, the only one that was was really tough. That was, yeah. that was the only game that was never there. Yeah, Virginia was close to a uh, halftime, I think, maybe something like that. It was pretty good, but but that was in the second half got away. But those games were all pretty good, and they're all top. Team, you know, and Virginia's even though they're not great, they're tough at home. And the yeah. other teams, the other teams are all top fifteen teams. So we may not be at that level. Pittsburgh, I think, is a good team. They went to Carolina last night and were in the game, and Hinson had the worst game of his career. You know, he was I, when I was watching it one time, he was one for 10 or something, and he's averaging 20 for them. So, I, again, I think there's, there's nothing but good signs watching this team play. And the league boils down to you have to beat the teams like Pittsburgh, Boston College is pretty good, Wake Forest is pretty good, uh, NC State's pretty good. Uh, there's, there's Georgia Tech's played well. There's four or five teams right there that are pretty good teams that we're going to have about eight or ten games against. So we can beat those teams. We got Carolina twice. They're good, but they are beatable, I think. Uh, Miami's good, but they're not as good as they've been. So I, I think you know, you go to Duke. You're you know, it's a tough place to play. They go eight for eight from the three in the second half, and we go what one for eight or something. 
you know, you're going to lose that game and you just learn from it and you move on. But I think that there's, I see nothing uh, but real positive from this team. And, you know, we all know that J.J. struggles shooting the ball. And uh, he's working on that. He goes in there and works out all the time. I, I've heard he's over there at night, Saturday night, any night, weeknights. Uh, so that's better than being on Marshall Street, so that's a good job, J.J. Yeah, well, you're not getting better than Marshall Street. You should be good examples of that. But, well, it yeah, depends uh, on what you want to get better at. It, it depends <laughs> on what you're trying to get better at. I don't know. <laughs> you know no, that's good. He has great work ethic. Drop back, he'll be as good as anybody. He's a good player. He knows he's physical. He's strong. He, you know, and the ironic thing, if you remember back at well, he's a freshman at Beville, he was a shooter. Right. That's what he, he all through high school. He was a guy that really shot the ball well. And and didn't he didn't handle it that much, but he shot it. And mm-hmm. uh, I remember games in summer basketball in high school. He he makes seven or eight threes, so he can get back to that. That would really help. But you you have to be very pleased at the changeover that Adrian's made with this team to man to man to what they're doing. They get pretty good movement. Sometimes they get a little stagnant. You know, what that happens, particularly happens on the road, but it's a tough place to play. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question to both of you, really, but especially Coach, and, and it's piggybacking off what you asked you about, you know, maybe some lineup changes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as a coach, is it – do you want to just keep it what the player is used to? So, if, you know, I think back to myself when AO gets hurt my sophomore year against Georgetown in the tournament. I now have to start in, you know, in the tournament. Mind you, I've been playing good all year, but that change to becoming a starter kind of threw me off. So do you, as a coach, say, okay, no matter, I'll start somebody else just to have this player still be comfortable in the role that he's been in all year? Well, you have to play the player. Like in that situation, you had to start. Rick had yeah. to move to the center. There was nothing we could do. If right. AO doesn't get hurt, we're going to the Final Four. And no I, think we, I think we can win it. Yeah, I think we win it. I really do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, injuries do happen. But the problem with lineup changes, they've already made a lineup change. You don't need to change your starting lineup. They've made the change. Who played last night? Malik yeah, exactly. And Quadir, and then he played the most. Yeah, and, yeah. And so you don't have to change the lineup. You can play the way you're playing. Um, the starters, even though they haven't played well, they were in the game. You know, it was nine, what nine, nine, eleven, eleven, something like that. Mm-hmm. Before mm-hmm. The substitutions. So it's not like the starters are down ten nothing. You know, they just right. you were even. Um, but you. You need to play eight guys or nine. You know, we always played eight or try to. Sometimes it was seven, but mostly eight. And uh, it, to play nine is still hard. It's hard to get that ninth guy out there. Uh, and if you look at all the other teams, Duke, whoever we're playing, Pitt, they play seven or eight guys. That's what teams do. Uh, it's you, you're, you don't have nine guys that good usually. And For real. You want to keep your best players out there if you're in a close game. But they, they've made the change. I mean, they're playing the bench more right yeah. now, and they deserve to play more. But I still think Kristen and Justin can help and can make good plays, uh, get going. You know, Chris is the best shooter on the team. There's going to be some games that people take him away. But when they're taking him away – it does create a lane to drive to. Exactly. So, exactly. You, know, you have to think of those things. Chris, you just can't make turnovers like he did last night, bad turnovers. But, you know, he's a, these guys are young. And I mean that in a very positive way. They're getting better and they're going to get better. But I looked at some of the teams age wise in the country. Memphis average age is 23.2. Years oh, wow. off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> when our first players on the court, if you look at their average age, I doubt if we're 19 or maybe 19. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we're 19. If you put Malik out there with, you know, Benny and Quadir and JJ and the average age is probably 19.5 or something. And even yeah. other teams like Arizona's 22. I looked at a bunch of teams the other day. You look at Illinois, Quincy's in his fifth year. Shannon, if he can get back, is in his fifth year. A couple other guys there in their fourth year. Um, you know, we basically have five sophomores out there playing. And these people have seniors. Duke's a little different because Duke is getting the top five players in the country. So it's a little yeah. different. You know, Duke. But Carolina, Baycott's, Baycott's in his eighth year, I think. He's yeah. 30. He's 30. He's his, his fourth year, fifth year, whatever. Um, you know, they brought in Ingram from Stanford, fifth year. They brought yeah. in Brian, uh, you know, Cormac Ryan from Notre Dame, fifth year. You're mm-hmm. talking about four, five, fifth year players, and we're playing five sophomores. I mean, that's a yeah. huge difference and I'm I think they're doing a great job I, I mean I really I, I I'm pretty straight up honest I don't see anything to criticize with this year's team other than they they just got to keep going keep going along yeah. and uh, you know I mean it's crazy to me I watched Joe Lenardi's thing he had Oregon in the tournament uh, last week, or just two days ago, and we weren't, and we just beat Oregon by 15. And yeah, that only sense. Now, I mean, we can be a team. It's going to be uh, hard, but we've already beaten one of the teams that we had. Well, Oregon was a team we had to beat, and we had to win in Georgetown, which we did. Mm-hmm. It's not that easy, and we had to beat Pittsburgh. Those are all the games that we had to win. We, we would have liked to win another game, but you've lost the three top 15 teams and at Virginia, which pretty much everybody's going to lose in Virginia, even though they're down a little bit. So we're in a great position, and you know, but it's tough. Boston College is playing really good this year. I'm impressed. This is the best Boston College team that I've seen in a long time. Post is as good a center as there is in the league and you know, we're good. Then we got North Carolina and then you know, we still got to go to North Carolina. So, I mean, they, we've got to get better, but I'm really pleased at how they're playing, what they're doing. Hey coach, I, I, I'm real quick about uh, Chris Bell, because I know he hasn't been playing well the last five, six games, but we've seen what he's capable of. He, I, you know what, if he's, really engaged and, and locked in, like, on both ends of the floor. Because we've seen him, him, he's capable even of being a really good defender on the wing if he brings that energy and effort. I mean, he had a game where he had four or five blocks, getting back in transition and, and, and blocking them that way. And then he, So he's capable, and we've seen offensively he's capable. But I, I just think for us to be really good, because Judah's going to do what he does. I, I mean, but I think for – you know, how long can you sustain, like, playing like that? Because every shot he's taking is super hard, man. Like, he's, he's, it's always so difficult. And he's, he's one of the best shot makers in the country being able to make those difficult shots. But I just think if, if we're able to space the floor a little bit more, because basketball is about shooting now. And, and it just seems to me like we're, we're not a great shooting team, but Chris Bell is the guy, or even Justin Taylor is the guy who could really – help space the floor for guys like Judah and JJ. And, and now once that happens, it's over because nobody can stay in front of Judah. And he's, you know, if he's getting to the line 10 times a game, you know, with, with not much perimeter shooting, you know, just think how much it would be if, you know, you could have guys knock down yeah, and, and, and yeah. you know, space that floor out. Well, the problem with Chris is his defense isn't great. He's got to get better there. His rebounding is still not there. And, He's got you. If you're just a shooter, it, you've got to like you just go back to Joe Girard. He shot, but he learned how to put it on the floor and pull up, or even get by. You know, Buddy learned that. You learned that. You know, Trevor Cooney, although he was more of a shooter, he could put it on the floor and pull it up. 
Yeah. Chris, if he doesn't get an open shot, when he tries to put on the floor, he's, he has trouble. That's where yeah. he makes the turnover. And to be, you, they're going to guard him. Even if Judah's going to drive, they'll, they'll help someplace else. They'll guard Chris Bell. So he's going to have to be able to catch, pump fake, and get by and pull up, which he has done, but he's got to do better. And he's also a confidence player. You can watch him. If he yeah. misses a shot, he puts his head down. You know, when you, Eric, when you missed your first shot, you put your head up and said, give me the ball, I'm going to make this one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he missed five shots in a row. He said, give me the ball. I'm making this one. He misses one, he gets his head. He can't do that. No shooter can do that. So he's got to play with more confidence. He's got, he has proved that he can make shots. So he's got to play with that confidence. And I think when he plays well offensively, this shouldn't be the case, but it picks his up defensive effort. Yeah. That's that's bad, but it's pretty much true. It's common. Of, yeah. A lot of common. But and what do you, you say know, to a guy like that, coach? Like like when he, he like to be able to like because you're right. Like I see when he misses a shot or he makes a turnover, he, his body language is it, bad. I mean, and, and everyone sees it. So like. But what do you say to a guy like that who sometimes maybe, you know, takes that different that, that criticism personally and, and not as like a critique? That isn't even about criticism. That's about him missing a shot, put his head down right away. It's not criticism. Yeah. It's just that's just him. And the coaches have talked to him about that uh, all the time. Jerry talks to him. Red, Adrian, Alan, Brandon, they all talk to him. I've said. I've, I talk to Chris whenever I go down. I say, hi, how you doing? And probably four out of five days that I see him, I say, Chris, just shoot the ball. Keep your head up. You can shoot. Don't put your head down. Keep, keep shooting. Because you're right. I mean, we've won a couple games without him, good games. But it would be easier if he's making shots. And the reason he's starting is because he's the best shot maker on the team. And yes. we need to get him yes. going. We're still in early. We're not halfway yet in the season. So we need to, to keep trying to get him going, I think. But, you know, I, I don't – you know, when I watch coaching in games, I look at everything. I, you know, pick this apart like, well, this guy could – I think we're doing everything we can. I think the coaches are doing everything they can. I think they're doing an unbelievable job, and they they've just got to keep working as they're doing every day to get a little better on defense and to you know they've got to make shots. I mean they work on that every day. You know the Georgetown game, JJ made shots. Uh, you know, you look at uh, Pittsburgh the other night. Wadir made some shots and got to the basket. You know, um, you can't always get to the basket. There's there's some teams that are good enough that you aren't going to get there all the time. So it right. comes down, you got to make some shots. They're just giving us threes. I mean, people are playing. I mean, it was a good sign last night. I think Quadir is a pretty good shooter. I've watched him. He makes his foul shots. If he gets a lot of time for a three, which he's getting, I think, what was he, two for six last night? Maybe not great. But if he could make some threes, that would help because that, yeah, that would set up his drives. But, you know, Judah hasn't really – he's been going by. He hasn't taken a lot of threes. So – you know, that mean, indicates to me that he feels he can get by these people and get to the foul line, make plays. But uh, they're they're playing good. They just got to keep yeah. doing what they're doing. I think there are some questions from the chat. <laughs> but as we wait for those – oh, there you go. Okay. My golf game is absolutely awful. That's the problem with <laughs> the by the time you retire, you're too old to hit the ball. I can't hit it anywhere. So <laughs> I play nine holes at night. I just once in a while, Buddy and Jimmy go out. They hit it 100 yards past me. 
but I can still beat him. So that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> Coach, we're getting up. We're, we're going to get a, 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 a golf tournament going together for the foundation. So I need you to get your foursome together, <clears throat> whoever it is. Because, Coach, I'm terrible. I, if you think you're bad, I'm, I'm – listen, man. I, we don't even got to talk about what my golf game is. I'm just out there riding on the cart, handing out drinks. <laughs> So I'm well, just trying to enjoy it that way. It's not, it's not how good you are now. It's if you were good, it's hard to go out and play not good. That's the problem. You, you never played good. So it's, it's you know, <laughs> yeah. you're, not missing, you're not missing anything. <laughs> it's all my right. here. I'm set up in my in Julie's office. So those are her, that's all her stuff in the background there and stuff like that. <laughs> You see my antiques. You see my antiques in the back. (laughs) You're the antique right in the front. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Buddy Buddy gets to play. He has 14 in the first seven minutes and turns his guy. Of all people, Leaky Black comes underneath him on a three and he lands it. And they give him a flagrant one, but uh, so he. The best start he had to a game. He's averaging around 12 and a half in 20 minutes, which is pretty good, G League. But he's shooting 41% from the three, which is better. Than yeah, that's, that's real good. Cole, Cole is having a good time in the G League, too. He's having the, he's playing well, so that's good. I like to see the Q's guys doing doing well. I think Cole can help somebody. I really do. He, yeah. he, he can shoot the ball. And nothing bothers Cole. He just goes in and shoots. He doesn't think about it. You know, that's no, the thing. <laughs> Buddies are shooting. They don't think. They just shoot. You know. Coach, we got another question for you. What's your favorite part of retirement? Not having the, the you know, the, the, the hour before the game when you're sitting there in the locker room and you're worried about everything that's going to happen, that hour is awful. It's the worst hour <laughs> of your life. That's good. That's all fun. But the worst hour is before the game, and then when you lose, it's bad for until you play another game. So you you don't miss that that incredible low. <laughs> the yeah. highs I miss, <laughs> but you don't miss those lows. And you know, just going to practice and work with players, it's so much fun. You know, being on the road with the coaches, you miss all that stuff. But as far as Talked to Coach K the other night, and we both said the same thing. We are so happy because I can go, <laughs> you know, watch a few things, you know, where they always make mistakes and stuff, and I can just kind of get up and go home. <laughs> I don't have to worry about, well, Eric's just being crazy today, and Chris Joe is like, he, what, what's wrong with that today? <laughs> <laughs> out there in the corner someplace. I, I, mean, I know they'll be all right, but that's what happens during practice sometimes. So I don't. <laughs> I got, I got who, who, who are the guys who stress you out the most, Coach? I mean, I, mean I, I know I was one of those guys, but who? I mean, you who know, are the guys I, that really put you through the ringer? The better the player, the less I got stressed about them. So, like, okay, they're okay. Cool. Player, but he used to do crazy stuff, and I just go home at night and think, okay, that he's crazy, but he's a great player. <laughs> he's <gonna go out. laughs> On Saturday, he might have done something crazy today, but Saturday when we play Georgetown, he's getting twenty-five and seventeen because that's Shout what he got to DC. Shout out to uh, DC, man. Right I, I, uh, I don't. I just worry about players that stress me out and they're not that good. They, they bother me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. So we shouldn't even worry about, about those guys. Yeah, you know, there's a question about Fran Brown. I haven't met Fran Brown. He's obviously locked in, bona fide, big time recruiter. He, uh, you, you can tell that when you talk to him for ten, five minutes. I talked to him for ten minutes. I mean, he's a bona fide. This is what I do, coach. And he knows it. And the smart thing is he knows he's the head coach and everything, but he knows also but I, I got here by being a recruiter. He's out there recruiting. I mean, he's like we're we're sitting here, he's recruiting. 
you're sleeping tonight, if you go to bed at 11 or 12, that guy is recruiting. He's not having, you know, watching TV. That man is recruiting 24-7. And I think he hired three or four guys. That's what they do. You know? right. And they're, they're coaches, but he'll have good football coaches with him. Um, but he's a recruiter, and we need – it's hard at Syracuse. You have to – Go find guys and you have to read Because this isn't the first choice in football for the top, what, 100 players? I mean, you yeah. got to get you got to get your way yeah. in there and find guys. And I've been impressed with him. Um, he's, he's really been on the road. I had a quick question for you, Coach. Um you know, I know when you're in it, when you're coaching, I guess you, you win a game, you got to worry about the next one. You know, you can't really bask in the glory for too, too long because you got other things to worry about, a practice plan, the next game. Now that you've been, you know, out of it for a while, have you had time to just reflect on just your coaching career as a whole and everything that you've been able to accomplish from a coaching standpoint and really just appreciate everything that you've done for the game, for the for Syracuse and so on and so forth? Yeah, I mean, you're right. When you're coaching, you you just don't think about that stuff very much. Yeah. You know, now I'm so old, I can't remember much of the good stuff. So, you know, but uh, the the most <laughs> the most surprising thing for me is, uh, you know, I think when I was coaching, I was locked in. Uh, uh, people didn't always always come up to me. You know, I I, I mean, I'm not the like. Smile and as friendly as guy. Like people probably were a little bit afraid, but when you retire, everybody comes up to you. You know, now <laughs> I, I, I went into friendlies. I, I, I haven't been to a friendlies in years because we only have one left in Syracuse. It's out way out in North by Northern Mall there. And I love friendlies. Oh, wow. So I went out there and like there were 30 people in there and they were all looking and shaking their head. Nice going, coach. And you know, we, we got up to leave my daughter and I and her friend, a couple ladies were saying, I was just, Coach, thanks for 47 years, you know. And uh, that's big. I mean, that is yeah. big. You know, uh, I go into a restaurant, I think, in Skinny Alice the other day, and a couple guys said, Coach, you don't know me, but thank you, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, people follow Syracuse basketball, let's face it. they This area – I don't know what the viewership is, but at one time, 34 or 5 percent of the TV sets were on when we played a game. And mm -hmm. so I've watched me coach for 47 years. So and there's always critics, obviously, but the normal fans, they're, they're, the, the critics yeah. never appreciate it. Win, lose or draw. They don't they're not right. happy. So but the normal people, they just come over to you and say, coach. Thank you. And that means more to me than just the idea that I did something. That the people, you know, that friendlies think that. And yeah. Yeah, right. Amazing. Hey, coach, real quick. Oh, you see the shout out to the anniversary of the Blazer ripoff. We they showed that they showed that on the broadcast last night. I, know. I knew coach, what I did. Sold for Fifteen thousand, didn't it? Fifteen thousand? Yeah. We raised fifteen thousand and I knew when I did that. They would never forget me at Duke. I mean, they'll forget <laughs> forever. They won't even, but they'll never forget that, you know, that moment. And yeah. uh, it was kind of spontaneous. The only time I got thrown out of a real game. <laughs> No, that was a, that was a classic. Hey, Coach, I kind of want to stay on topic about what you're just talking about, about, you know, people coming up to you and, you know, just saying thank you and, and you know, all the people in the chat asking these questions and, I mean, did you ever think, you know, I mean, just, you know, I guess going back to, you know, uh, you just getting involved in basketball, we talked about you playing with the Scranton Miners, then, you know, you had the decision to either go to, to University of Rochester, I don't know if a lot of people know that, or to Syracuse, and then eventually, you know, chose Syracuse, but in, in all your wildest thoughts, I mean, would you ever imagine this is how it would have ended up, you know, you being in the Hall of Fame, and then, you know, having a community support you like, like, like it does, like Syracuse, and I, I guess what does that really mean to you? You know, because that's 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 really well, special, man. And Syracuse is a special community. 
It's everything. It means everything to me. The community has been unbelievable for our foundation. We've raised millions and millions of dollars to help fight cancer and to help with kids in our community. And the community's done that. The, the fans have done that. The, the, we get 20,000 people to go to a game in the Dome in the wintertime with no parking. Um, mm -hmm. Whoever thought that? I was a walk-on. I, I didn't know if I could last a month here. And, you know, I, I'm still here. Uh, I never envisioned any of that. And I remember even when I got the job, I, I didn't think I'd get the job. And when I got it, I said, well, I hope I can last four years. You know, they wanted to give me three years, and I wanted a four-year contract because I was worried about lasting four years. Um, so I never envisioned any of that happening. And But to, to, to just be able to do it this long and have the support we've had is incredible. And the most amazing thing in college basketball is the Syracuse fans come to the Dome over these years at more than 20,000 people a game average. Yeah. It's, at one time it was 24 or 5,000. It's probably an average of 22 or 3,000 in a small town with a, no parking in the winter. Who <laughs> I mean, when I, in, in their wildest dreams, when I didn't want to play there, I, the, the man that got us, made us play there, really, Cliff Winters was the cha vice chancellor, said, well, we can get fourteen or 15000 And that was, I, I, I doubted that. And I think he did, too. But he knew we had to play there because we had the building and we had to use it. But I just thought it was... It, it, the whole, this whole thing, this whole forty-seven years, is uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And the one thing I will say that I appreciate, that I'm happiest about, is uh, whenever I go anywhere in Syracuse, everybody tells me how great Eric Devendorf is. And when I had him, he was not always great. And. <laughs> He fought through all that, and he became the guy he is today, and that is unbelievable. And when I see Derek Coleman running basketball leagues in Detroit, running a team, a league, you know, I see, you know, all the guys we've had. Look at them all. They all are doing great, great things. Our former managers – Two or three of them are NBA assistants or work in the NBA. Two or three are big-time agents. Um, some are college coaches, um, guys that have worked here for us. Um, I mean, it's amazing to look at all the guys we've had and how they've turned out. And uh, everybody is a family. You know, it's our family. Mike and Mike Shishovsky and I have the the best family trees, Duke and Syracuse, because we stayed forty some years. Other coaches yeah. are eight or ten. You're not going to develop a family in seven or eight years. So we have that. And this summer, we're going to try to bring as many players back as we can. You well, know, first of all, for the gala and have something, and then try to maybe even do something in the summertime where everybody comes back. So we're a family. And uh, a lot of coaches say that, but we are. And uh, I, I'm proudest of the way all of our players have have turned out, whether I can go through the list of, of players. You know, Preston Schumbert's teaching kids in town here in basketball. Um, Brandon Trish, Howard Trish, still doing stuff here in Syracuse, positive. Roosevelt Bowie, same thing. I mean... It's a great, great group. And somebody just mentioned in the chat about critics. I really, at the end of the, you know, in the beginning, you listen. To, at the end, I don't, I never listen to the critics. I mean, I might react to somebody saying something that's just stupid. But at the end of the day, you know, people, the critics have their jobs because of Syracuse basketball. If one for Syracuse basketball, they wouldn't have a job. They wouldn't be Bingo. Out. Didn't have anybody to talk to. But, you know, we've had good coverage. I don't, I never agree with everything, but the people that cover us 
have been fair, Donna DeSoto, Mike Waters, they're all fair, fair people. They've covered me for over 20 years, both of them. Um, I don't think they've ever been very uh, complimentary, but that's just the way they are. And <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But, uh, you know, I, I, I like dealing with the media. It's a myth that I don't. It's fun to do press conferences. It's fun to do talk to the media and people. It's fun to do radio. It's fun to do these shows. It's all fun. I mean, I don't mind any of it. Um, but do I get upset when I get a, a bad question? Sure I do. But a lot of reporters that came through here, students, thanked me when they left because they said, Coach, I knew I had to be prepared. I got ready for your press conference more than I got ready for a class. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> all out there in the world. I work with them. I work with them at ESPN, the producer, the director, uh, you know, behind the scenes, they're all Syracuse graduates. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the media is fine. You know, I'm always going to react to somebody, but uh, that's all part of the job. And I miss a little bit. Yeah, those conversations, uh, that stuff. But uh, I don't miss coaching that much. I think I had just the right amount. <laughs> hey, hey, coach, we got we got a couple minutes left um, before we let you go. Um, I, I know I speak for all the Syracuse basketball players, and I'll, and I'll let Joe um, say something after me, but. You know, w without you, coach, without you, I mean, you know, I, I go back in my mind and think about all the stuff that I went through, you know, as a player. First of all, my four years at Syracuse were the best four years of my life. Uh, and, and I tell that to everyone. But, you know, your support and, and your dedication, you know, to your players, you know, without that, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today or where, you know, be on the path where I'm trying to go. So I, I just want to thank you, uh, you know, thank Julie and your family. I mean, I'm, I, I'm closer to your family than I got, you know, most, most of the players, but, um, you know, I, I couldn't say enough about you and, and I'm just so thankful and grateful for, uh, you know, what you've done for me. You've helped me become the, the man that I am today and, and, and will continue to be. So I really appreciate you. And, and I love you coach for everything that you've done. Yeah, no, I, you know, I spot on, E, you know what I mean? I, I always go back to the moment where, because, you know, it's, people feel like, you know, sometimes you get picked on by a coach and you start getting frustrated. You're young, you're in your feelings, like, what the fuck? What did I do? It, it wasn't even my side of the zone, like he, and he's screaming at me. I, I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you think of these moments, but I always go back to the time where you told me, well, you know, the day that I stopped getting on you, that's when you start worrying. Because that's, you know, that's when you should start worrying. And then I took that into consideration. I'm like, you know what? It's not bad. It's not so bad after all. You know what I mean? And like you said, it was the best four years of my life. You helped me um, become the man that I am today through basketball, which is a beautiful thing, right? The sport, a sport is what makes you evolve as a man off the court because it teaches you so many things. And you were a big part of that. Your family's always been kind. And I appreciate you, and I, you know, and I love you too, Coach. So I appreciate you for everything that you did, and you know, continue to do. Well, I I appreciate you guys for what you did. Coaches are nothing without players, and I I realized that right away in the beginning. And players are going to make mistakes. Players are going to do things they shouldn't do, like every 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kid does. And you try to get them through it. And fortunately, over the years. Uh, we've been able to get everybody through it and they get to where they understand what the right things are. Some people understand it earlier <laughs> than others, but it's, it, it's part of coaching is teaching and working with young people. And I've been blessed to have great coaches to work with, first of all, and then great players who evolve as they from when they come in here, whether they're pretty good or good or whatever, they get better and they get better off the court and on the court. And that's my job. And I mean, I'm to be able to do what I did for so for any amount of time, but for so long as I am so thankful. And I, I don't think uh, enough of us are thankful for what we do have and what does happen. 
you know, we always want something else. But I'm one person who is feels like he's as lucky as anybody can be because I've had the basketball family I have and, of course, the real family, which is the most important thing. But to have the basketball family I've had over the years and the fans we've had, um, I just can't, I can't really express uh, the gratitude I have from coming here as a 17-year-old kid who do, couldn't even find my way to class because, you know, we helped you guys. You know, nobody helped us back then. I didn't know what it took me two full days to register and find all my classes. And we do all that for you guys now. But, uh, and some of you still can't find them. Class. You're right, Coach. I'm still looking. I'm still looking for a few. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to be a coach in, in, in this community and this the support system, People wonder why I never left. I mean, I had offers, I, I, but I never even considered going anyplace else. Because first of all, I love Syracuse and the, the community. It's a great place to live. And I, uh, the, the fans are unbelievable. And uh, I just would never imagine anything better. And people can't wait when they get to be 70 something to go to Florida. I'm still here. I'm not in Florida. <laughs> That's, you know, the problem that. is in, the, in what you do. You know, if I was saying all these nice things about Syracuse, living here all these years, and just moved out to Florida, I guess I didn't mean it. But I'm here, and you know, I'll always be here. I'll always be in Syracuse. Coach, man, we, we appreciate you coming on. We, we, we'll let you get back to uh, hanging out with your wife, <laughs> Julie. Retirement. Yeah. Retirement, exactly, man. But we, we uh, hopefully we'll have you back on uh, after the season or and, and talk about how that went. But again, Coach, we, we really appreciate you coming on and uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah, it, Coach. Coach. Joe, and to end the right show. Yeah. Until next yeah. Wednesday, baby. You already know, my brother. Love.